grab your big book, your pen, your highlighter, and notepad and get ready to hear and apply some of the solution from the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous through the experience, strength, and hope of Nikki M. To have a question addressed in a future episode of Noodle It Out with Nikki, please send an email to noodlewithnikki at gmail.com and Nikki is spelled with two Ks. To get a more interactive experience with Nikki as she noodles out life and recovery questions using the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous, you can get a link to her weekly Noodle It Out with Nikki meeting held live on Zoom every Monday morning at 9 o'clock Eastern Time. The information to that meeting is in the show notes of this podcast. God morning, God afternoon, and God evening to all. My name is Justin B., and I am a son of an all-powerful and all-loving God and a qualifying addict of multiple fellowships, living in the miracle of recovery, and I'm here with the intelligent agent, spearhead of God's ever-advancing creation, and my co-host, Nikki M. Nikki, please say hi to us. Well, hi, everybody. And, you know, today I woke up and I was like, it's the greatest day of my life. Not because I've just won lottery, not because, oh, you know, I'm going to be a grandma or or I actually can get married and live in Luxembourg forever. No, it's because God woke me up. I'm just so grateful. So today is the greatest day of my life. Thank you, Justin. Love it. All right. Nikki uh, and Noodle It Out with Nikki is a member of the Rico 12 Family of Recovery Resources, and we're super excited and happy about that. There's lots of other things that we're doing here at Rico 12. You can find that information in the show notes of the podcast. And uh, please go check all of those other things out. They're great resources for the addict and for the loved one of the addict. Um, All right. Today, we're going to jump in and and do some more noodling uh, with Nikki, uh, some big book deep dives into uh, solutions of everyday problems, not just for people who are struggling with, uh, with, you know, addictive behaviors, addictive substances, but people who are struggling with life and just want to find a solution to, to, to life's issues. And today we're going to jump in. We're, I think we're going to do a topic on the, the concept of, of willingness, you know, Nikki in the big book, uh, towards the back, I think it's towards the, one of the very back pages that talks about, um, willingness, honesty, and open-mindedness. Why don't you share a little bit about that? And then we'll get into some questions. Okay, great. I love this, Justin, because my mind, you just said we're in a great mood. We just got off the noodle uh, uh, meeting. And so I'm just filled up on, on, on willingness is what I'm really filled up with, which is, it says it on page 568. And that's in the spiritual experience. That's in the appendix at the back. And it says on page 568, it says, we, and that's big book people who've come before for me, they find, and that's me now because I find that no one, and my line out says no one, including NM, that's me, Nikki M, need have difficulty with the spirituality. See, this is a spiritual program. It says spirituality of the program. And, you know, I like to describe, I mean, I Google these words and, you know, I, a program, it is a set of instructions, uh, for a particular long-term aim. It is a coded set of instructions with the automatic performance of a, of a task and it's instructions to control the operation of a machine or a person. That's me. So I need these instructions. I need this program in me. And, and it says right here, the next line is right here. Willingness, honesty, and open-mindedness are the essentials. Essentials, that means I need to have it. Essentials means I need to have it. And then it says, but these are indispensable. These are indispensable, meaning, Justin, I'm in Toronto, Canada. Recently, my government regulate or allowed um, the deregulation of marijuana. You can go into any dispensary and get marijuana of some sort, some variety of THC, whatever it is that you need to take. You can go into a pharmacy and they will dispense pharmaceuticals for you. In certain parts of Canada, you can go into places and they will dispense using kits. But willingness, you can't go into a dispensary and get it. You cannot go into a dispensary and get honesty, and you certainly can't go in and get open-mindedness. This Mm. must come from within. I can't, my sponsor could not dispense this to me. This is very radical. Just like the powers deep down inside, so is this willingness. 
Love it. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. And and you gave me some good uh, food for thought for a future episode on open-mindedness uh, with, with that analogy you gave on the dispensary. I, I saw a comment earlier in, I can't remember which chat stream it was in or anything like that. Maybe it was something that I Maybe it was something that one of my sponsees or or something emailed to me. But the comment was something like this. I recently started working with someone who says they are willing to meet and go through the big book with me, but not willing to work the steps. Um, t- tell me a little bit about that and what, uh, what your thoughts are on approaching a situation like that where, hey, this person, or maybe it's me. Hey, I'm willing to do the exterior things, but I'm not willing to dive deep. Let's Let's go there. Okay, great. Well, hi, I'm Nikki M. And as Justin said, I'm an intelligent agent spearhead who sponsors. So my sponsees or anyone I work with is going to sponsor. When we do this work, as you know, we work out of a workbook. The very first sentence, because my 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 past sponsor who did the workbook, he put together, and the very first sentence after you, you know, you figure out what's what's really troubling you. And it's not just an alcohol and drug addiction. It's, you know, as we talk about every every substance including fear under the sun, it says you're going to be a sponsor. So if you're not going to sponsor, I cannot work with you. I'm in a 12 step program that has an entire chapter called working with others. What I can do new friend is I can commence shoulder to shoulder with you, our common journey. So if you'd like to get together for a coffee, you want to do fellowship, but you are not going to suck my soul and I'm not going to listen to your 400 forms of madness. Nikki, what page is that on? That's on page 62. See, if you have not sponsored and you're not working a 12, not 11 step, a 12 step program, you are driven by 100 forms of fear, 100 forms of self-delusion, self-seeking and self-pity. You are not gonna take me hostage with your thoughts and words. Oh, what other page is that on, Nikki? That's on the doctor's opinion. You cannot differentiate the true from the false. So my job as a sponsor is to get you through these steps. Now, what my sponsor said to me on page 96, and I wrote this at the very top of page 96 is here. 96, I put sponsor's duty. Number one is to love. That's God's will. That's my duty, Justin. I have to love this person in front of me. They need help. Then number two, my sponsor's duty is to guide someone through the 12 steps. And then my mental note says, if they don't want to do this 12 steps, see number one, love them. Then I read a little further. Nikki, do not be discouraged if your prospect does not respond at once. Here's my instruction. I'm to search out another addict and do it again. I cross out the word try in my big book, fellows because I'm a student of Yoda. See where religious and spiritual people are right. Do or do not, there is no try. So I just do it again. Here's my promise and your promise, Justin, and the person who asked you this question. You are sure to find someone desperate enough to accept with eagerness what you offer. See, the book tells me they find it a waste of time to chase a man or a woman who cannot and will not work with you. See, my line out says, move on, Nikki. Just move on. Find another addict. If you hear a dog barking in the background, everybody, that's my little log, which is my human aid. My mom bought me a dog years ago when I couldn't find a husband. Rather than making all my dreams come true, you understand where pets go, okay? I love him, but he (laughs) he doesn't know I'm on a podcast. So get another sponsee and move on. And just love that person who won't work the steps. Does that make sense, Justin? Absolutely. And I I, I love that. Uh, go back to number one, love them. You know, I think that applies in so many places in life, not just in recovering and working with sponsees, but, you know, maybe with a child who isn't uh, doing what I think, well, from my wisdom and experience is better for them. And, and no matter how I uh, communicate with them and no matter what decisions they make, I need to go back to number one and love them no matter what. Can I just say something on that too, Justin? It's like, well, where does it say that? It's This is a life instruction book. So what Justin just said, everybody listening, please, this is not just how to get off your DOC, your drug of choice. This is how you parent 
This is how Justin and I become partners, life partners for the people we love. This is how we grandparent, right, Justin? I mean, we're at that age soon, I hope, that you know we get these little bundles. Of this is how we, you're an employer, how we show up as employers, how we show up as employees. This is this is the life instruction book for life. And we had to throw our lives into the ground to get one. But Justin, we got one. We live here because look at what it says next. It says we have entered the spirit world. I just entered the spirit world. How am I expected on step nine to go make an amends to someone I hate? It, make it make sense, everybody. Call just, or email Justin and, and myself and noodle this out with us here because make that make sense. If I just entered the spirit world, I'm brand new. I've never even carried this message. And it doesn't say my next function is to run out and make an amends. It says my next function is to grow in understanding and effectiveness. Hey, here's a secret caveat. So I'm willing to run out and make the amends. See, I could not make the amends. And then, as you know from your instructions on step nine, everyone, it doesn't, it says literally there, our behavior will convince them more than our words. So sitting down in front of someone, I'm going to do better. I'm, so, I'm sorry. It says a remorseful mumbling that I'm sorry. How do we approach the person we hated? How about we live in the spirit world? Because it says the right answers will come after we've tried this for a while. You need to run out and go make the amends now, says the sponsor. Well, that's not what my book says, sponsor. It says I need to grow in effectiveness and understanding. So I'm willing to make this amends. This is called the big book dance. So this is where we get things that are so watered down. And I like to go to this example. Raise your hand if you need a sponsee or a sponsor. What page is that on? Please do not water down the message for a dying newcomer, friends. Keyword as. So to that person, how do you get willing? You live in the spirit world for a while with me and Justin. And then you sponsor. And then you watch your sponsee go and make that amends to someone they hated. And then you are forced to take off your diaper, put on your big girl pants, Nikki, and follow suit, toe the line, page 275, toe the line. And the right answers will come if I want it. Make sense? Yeah, it does. Now, I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into the willingness here. Man, I'm not willing to be willing. I don't want, I have zero desire to do that. And, and I'm coming from the place of that person who, 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 who says these things. And I've, um, so how do I become willing to become willing to become willing? You know, it can go on forever. What, what are some is. actions I can take there? Yeah, here's the actions. And, and, and faith without works is dead. So let's just go there. Faith without works is dead. So step six actually has a prayer. It says right here, page 76, if we still cling to something, Justin, Nikki, I hate that person. Look what they did to me. I'm not going to let go of it. I'm right there wrong. Justin and Nikki, it says on page 76, we ask God, it doesn't say call your sponsor to help us be willing. Now you've got a new person here, Justin. They don't want God. Well, then you ask the spiritual principles. Judge, uh, God is interchanged with the spiritual principles. So Justin and Nikki, we ask that being helpful make us willing. Well, what's helpful? I'm not willing to go see that person. Well, then you know what? Can you go to the meeting and sponsor somebody? Can you go and get a position and read the, uh, the literature tonight? Are you willing to do that? Okay. You ask God, okay, I'm not willing to forgive. Okay, well, then can you go and love on somebody right now? Love, just go love somebody. I don't care who it is. Go. Can't, I don't care. What does that look like? Go make grandma a cup of tea. Can you do the acceptance prayer? Because you have to accept. So will you please read page 417 all day, every day, all day, every day, until it becomes a working part of your mind, please? See, these are tangible actions. Okay, Justin, you hate that person. Can you please turn to page 552 and read the big shovel prayer? We're going to pray that, oh, what, they, they stole your, well, that they in, 
They did this. They stole. They did. They did what? Okay. Let's pray that they get everything you want and more. Come on. Let's do this. Let's pray over them. Oh, I'm still not willing. Okay, Justin, page 66. Justin, this is your course. So you pick this lane. You chose on your, if you want to roll back to page 63, where you made your decision to abandon yourself to God. And then sometimes, what do I do when no one's willing? I say, well, let me know how that works out for you. And then call me, take two of hate and call me in the morning, sir, madam. And let me know how that hatred and that poison works out for you. Because you see the book says resentment's going to kill me. So I'm going to do what the book says. You take your unwillingness and your hatred and let me know how that works out for you. Because guess what, Justin? There's nowhere else to go. These people come back. I've watched it. They come back or they sponsor. They get willing. They watch a miracle. They hear our testimony. Thank you, Nikki. Love that. And I'm going to jump over and I'm going to jump to page 552. And I'm actually going to read that paragraph that you referenced there. I think it's I think it's really powerful. I'm going to go ahead and do that too. For those who may not have the big book in hand or maybe wondering, 552, I don't have time to flip around and do all this stuff. But I'm going to read that because I think this is really powerful. He said, in effect, and this is the introduction into the quote here. If you have a resentment you want to be free of, if you will pray for the person or the thing that you resent, you will be free. If you will ask in prayer for everything you want for yourself to be given to them, you will be free. Ask for their health, their prosperity, their happiness, and you will be free. Even when you don't really want it for them and your prayers are only words and you don't mean it, go ahead and do it anyway. Do it every day for two weeks, and you will find you have come to mean it and to want it for them. And you will realize that where you used to feel bitterness and resentment and hatred, you now feel compassion, understanding, and love. And I'm going to add that phrase in there one more time. You will be free. Any any other thoughts on that, Nikki? That's a promise. See, the promises are real. And if you're walking and you're listening to me and Justin, you're out in the park and I want you to look up at the trees in the sky. And then I want you to remember, because Justin's right, a lot of people don't want to open the book. So we're going to read this to you on page 417. You already, you probably heard the acceptance prayer, know it. But here it is to those people who aren't willing. When you complain about me or about you, you're complaining about God's handiwork. People with me and Justin walking in your ear right now, look at the trees. Are you complaining about God's handiwork? Are you complaining about the the hands you have to actually push the button to hear our voices? Because if you are, you're saying that you know better than God. And that's really arrogant. See, everything, if you roll your eyes further up on page 417, it says nothing, absolutely nothing happens in God's world by mistake. So Justin and I are talking about a book that comes with a set of instructions that if you're in it, you should believe, you must believe. Otherwise, why are you here? So I think I want to end here is that get willing to believe what the book says, because this book is for everyone. Oh, it's written for alcoholics. It's really written for everybody, but it's hidden here in in the book of Alcoholics Anonymous. I, I love God's humor, Justin, and I see that smile on your face. I know you do too. Thank you, Nikki. Good stuff. Everybody, keep coming back. It works when I work it, so work it. You are worth it. 